In this video, we're going to look at the difference between a hypo, a hyper, and an isotonic solution. So we have hypotonic solutions, hypertonic solutions, and isotonic solutions. What the heck do they mean? Okay, um, it's, it's really honestly not that difficult. All these words describe osmosis type phenomenons. Okay, so in all of these we're dealing with osmosis. All right, and the best and most common way that we talk about these is with our red blood cells. Okay, very important, all right? And very important for us to understand because we're going into the medical field, right? Okay, so in general, all right, you have hypotonic solutions. Hypo means low, right? You're hypothermic when your body temperature is really, really low. Very uh, Hypo means low, under, less, okay? So what this means, a hypotonic solution has less concentration than the other solution around it. Hyper, right? If you're a hyper, ah, you're on a sugar rush. Hey, you are. You have high concentration, more. So this has more concentration, okay? And iso actually means equal, okay? So we have less concentration, more concentration than the equal concentration. This always has to be in relation to something else, right? You can't just say like, I have one solution and it's hypertonic. Well, hypertonic in relationship to what? Okay, so you always have two different things that are in play here. Whenever you're dealing with hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic solutions. For a visual to try and understand this, okay? Because typically when we talk about hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions, we're talking about red blood cells, okay? Red blood cells. Right? And red blood cells can either swell or shrink depending on what kind of solution that they are in. Okay? And uh, the best way I can think about showing this to you is with my hair tie. Okay? So imagine if you will that my lovely hair tie is a typical red blood cell. Okay? If the salt concentration inside and outside my uh, red blood cell are the same, okay? There we go, we'll, we'll pretend that's the same, okay? This, this would be isotonic, all right? The concentration of solute inside and outside is the same, they're equal, it's isotonic. Water would be able to flow back and forth in through my red blood cell, but, but nothing kind of crazy or terrible would happen. It's just an even flow, okay? If, however, I keep adding uh, more and more salt to the outside of my cell, I'll even take these out just for effect. Okay, here we go. All right. I have a ton of salt on the outside of my cell in comparison to the inside. Okay, this would be considered a hypertonic solution. Okay, uh, in this case. Right? This case would be a hypertonic solution because my cell is in a solution with a higher concentration of solute, of salt, of sugar, whatever it is. Okay, so my cell is in a hypertonic solution and osmosis is going to occur, which means water is going to be able to flow through the semi-permeable membrane to try and even out the solution. Well, there's more salt on the outside than inside, so water is going to be like, oh no, I need to even this out. I'm going to flow out of my red blood cell and then my red blood cell is going to start to shrink. Okay? Because nothing, you know, not a lot of water's in there. Water's going to keep flowing out. My red blood cell is going to shrivel up. Okay? This would be very, very bad if your red blood cell is shriveling up because you are not getting the proper amount of oxygen circulating through your body because your red blood cell can't hold that oxygen. Okay? On the flip side, if uh, you had too much salt, here we go. Okay, if you had too much salt in your red blood cell and not enough salt in your actual blood, okay, now your red blood cell is in a hypotonic solution, okay. 
the solution outside of it is, is hypotonic. I don't have enough. I have a lower amount of concentration of solute. Okay, so now water is going to be able to flow freely and it's going to go, oh no, there's so much salt, there's so much sugar, there's so much whatever, solute in there. I need to even it out. I know, I'll flow into this red blood cell. So your red, red blood cell starts to stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and expand until it pops, literally breaking your your blood cell, okay, it would swell so much that it would break, which would be very, 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 very bad. Um, and, you know, you would die, womp womp, okay? So what you wanna have is a nice isotonic solution with your red blood cells and your blood. That's why it's really important to maintain a good uh, blood sugar level, especially for someone who's diabetic, right? So um, just keep that in mind going forward in your medical future. Okay, and then just to look at the actual pictures. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my drawings. Okay, but here we go. Okay, if I had a hypotonic solution, all right, so hypotonic solution that my red blood cells in, meaning I have a lot more solute in my blood cell than outside it. So what's going to happen is water is going to flow inside my cell, it's going to swell up, and it will actually burst. <laughs> That's my picture of the red blood cell bursting. It's beautiful, I know. Okay, and this is called hemolysis. We'll write it up here. Okay, hemolysis. When I'm in a hypotonic solution, water flows into that red blood cell and bursts. Okay, it bursts it or swells it up, okay? Versus a hypertonic solution. Got all this salt on the outside in comparison to the inside. So the water from my cell is going to flow out into the solution and it will shrivel up my cell. It'll look like a little raisin, okay? It can't really transport blood very well in that situation. And this is called cremation, okay? When my blood cell shrivels up, it's called cremation, all right? Uh, okay, so basic idea of osmosis, hemolysis, and cremation. Uh, yeah, woo, good luck. Maintain good blood sugar, it's important. <laughs>